Yeah, uh, I know we have, um, as you got to mention, we've had a couple of uh, mining guests, um, guests from the mining industry. Um, we did have um, um, Charles Skomaka from Marathon Digital Holdings, and he did mention something. He said that, um, or he predicted rather that, he predicts that uh, in the next uh, probably you know, two decades that the mining industry would be would see lots of um we would see lots of you know power companies actively mining you know getting involved in Bitcoin mining. How do you agree with that statement? Have you had you know any have you heard you know anything in that regard? So I know that um, there was some news that came out. So first of all, I agree with that. I think that it's a no brainer that eventually you'll have power companies and utilities mining Bitcoin. Um, it just makes economic sense for them. Um, and I'll explain a little bit why in a second, but some of the developments we've seen, um, I think Mackenzie Sigalos, CNBC reporter on this, Conoco Phillips, like one of the largest oil producers in the world. Um, they've started, I think, letting Bitcoin miners come onto some of their sites and like mine flared gas. I could be wrong about exactly what the relationship is there, but like they have exposure to Bitcoin mining somehow at this point, like it is part of their revenue streams. And I think that that like, and so like there are a bunch of different models you could do here, right? Um, like if an energy producer is gonna mine, like are they just gonna let the miners come on and then take a cut? Like, you know, just kind of do like a hosting co-location model cause like, or sorry, not co-location model, just do kind of like a, let them do their thing. Um, cause that's one way to do it. They could also just buy the miners themselves and keep all of the profit. Um, and I think you'll have a mixture of these different, like they'll have, some of them will have joint ventures with miners. Some of them will just do mining outright. Um, but I think it is inevitable. And the reason is like, especially if you consider, so like, let's just say that you're a, um, let's say that you like, you're a utilities provider um, in like a, a large city in America or something. Um, and you have like, you have to budget for like a hundred megawatts of demand during any given day. Um, a lot of the time, like you'll probably only, the city will only produce like 50 megawatts of that, right? Um, so you're overproducing by 50%. Sometimes they'll produce, they'll, they'll consume 75 megawatts of that power. Sometimes they'll consume under 50 megawatts. Um, what Bitcoin mining allows these companies to do is the times that they overproduce and the grid is not consuming that energy, they can absorb that with Bitcoin mining and create profit on top of what was otherwise just completely wasted energy. So they can actually create revenue out of something that otherwise would have completely gone to waste. Um, and um, and the good thing about this is I wrote about this for Hashrate and X's newsletter a few weeks ago. You're kind of starting to see in Texas how this can be beneficial um, because, you know, when the grid is going to need that energy that the miners are using, these miners are starting to shut down. Like, um, when, what riots, windstone, uh, facility, huge facility in Rockdale, Texas shut down for like a week during some winter storms. Um, core scientific shut down some of its facilities in South Dakota this winter too, during some winter storms. And what that allows you to do is you can basically, um, like for every megawatt of energy that the energy company or utility company can create, Bitcoin mines can absorb some of that energy, right? So you could basically say like this, that this energy company creates hundred megawatts of energy um, and the Bitcoin mining uh, farm is gonna consume like 20 megawatts of that, right? And then, but it's, here's the thing is it's variable. You can take that energy back when you need it. So you can earn money from these Bitcoin miners when you, don't need that energy. And when you do need it, you just use it and provide it to the grid in, in any way. Um, and uh, this is kind of what people have been talking a lot about this, like power curtailing and like um, controllable load resources for Bitcoin, uh, like Bitcoin miners acting as that for the grid. It's a very complex topic that I honestly don't know enough about it. To, I wrote like very shallow on it. And I don't, what well, a dude from like, uh, his name is Blake King. He works at a, for a solar company. He like messaged me. Um, on, on LinkedIn, I like hit him back and he was saying how like the definition is like very technical, but uh, if Bitcoin miners act as a controllable load resource, basically what they can do is, is they power down or up when the, when the, the power authority needs them to. And this is a pretty novel, this is a pretty cool thing, right? Because you can basically build out additional power capacity when you necessarily wouldn't have the demand from the grid, right? So 
this means that like future energy projects can actually over budget for power creation because they're going to have someone, i.e. Bitcoin miners, to absorb that excess power. And then that profit can then be used to invest or incentivize additional energy sources and things like that. Um, and to kind of tie this back in, uh, Jerry, to your original thing, I do think power companies eventually will just it's going to they're going to do it it just makes economic sense and because of that like you know compound that with bitcoin's uh declining block subsidy in 10 or 20 years it's going to be very hard to mine unless you have i mean it's basically going to be like producing oil today right like you're going to have to have a shit ton of capital you're going to have to have a lot of uh a lot of uh capital backing you so that you can build out massive operations to really extract bulk amounts of, you know, like really have a bunch of hash rate because like the more you're going to actually be able, the more Bitcoin you're going to be able to mine, the more you're going to be able to actually extract profit when you're only making like one Bitcoin per block. Right. I guess like my concern definitely is like, as you say, when we get this, um, this uh, hash rate concentration and like the ability for only like huge investors in mining to be able to mine, then you're obviously going to reduce the amount of people or people in control mining, I suppose, at least. So then you do come into the risk of like, hey, if we've got, I don't know, a hundred different huge companies around the world that are mining, that's a hundred different huge companies that could be targeted by anyone or governments or whatever, or could collaborate to sense the transactions and kind of make Bitcoin not what it was supposed to be in the first place. Um, so it's kind of, I, I guess that then, then becomes... Yeah, I guess that then becomes like, you know, if, if we had it like that, I guess, are there going to be groups of people who are, don't care if it's profitable or not? And are just for the sake of keeping the Bitcoin network, what it is going to still just home mine, right? Like a kind of alchemist who we had on here, for example. Yeah, I think so. I think you'll still have clubs who want to just earn like, you know, sats that are like, you know, freshly minted KYC free. Um, they want to feel like they're, they want to feel like they're a part of the network and securing it. They want to also get uh, uh, Satoshis that they don't have to buy from an exchange. But ultimately, I think that that hash rate will be so minimal um, that I don't think uh, I, I don't think it'll factor in too much. But I think the good thing is, is I really do think that you'll see global uh, energy companies and um, global or just companies in general kind of tap into Bitcoin and mine. I, I think it'll always be a global thing. I mean, like, look, you have um, a lot of like even when electricity is really expensive, like if electricity is expensive in the United States or Canada and Bitcoin goes down um, and less miners are making money, um, the miners in places like Latin America, like Venezuela, who are mining for like sub one cent are gonna start making more money. Um, uh, that, that's, that might kind of seem like a tangent, but I guess my point in saying that is like, it's such a fluid thing. Like the, the mining profitability is always changing. Um, the, the pieces on the board are always changing. I mean, just a few weeks ago or just a few months ago, Kazakhstan was one of the largest mining hubs. Now they can't get their grid together, you know, and now miners are leaving because the government has basically scapegoated them and said, you're the reason our grid is shit. And it's not true, but they're leaving the country anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so I also think another good thing here too, um, mining concentration, obviously not good. We want as much distributed mining as possible. I really do think that ultimately it, it will be more globally distributed. I don't think the United States and Canada will be 50% of the hash rate forever. Um, but uh, the, the, the good thing is too, this is why nodes exist. This is why Bitcoin is such a beautiful, uh, beautiful machine. Um, Ultimately, if you run your own node, you don't really have much to worry about. And it's not totally true because it's more complicated than that. Like the market also has to decide that the coin that you choose to support is the coin that is the most valuable one. So um, but there's kind of a, a threat of that too, I guess, to your point, Lawrence. But um, I think that mining will ultimately be extremely distributed just because the incentives are too are too great for a lot of these especially multinational companies and uh, energy producers yeah i guess it's like they, they they know what happens if they mess up and end up having things too concentrated suddenly your entire business model is destroyed within a day or something essentially if there's like a right. attack because you guys have colluded um so it seems pretty stupid uh if you're going to do it on purpose 
Um, mm. I guess like a, a more specific question to, to what you're up to now, um, like following your move uh, into the mining industry, like obviously you're working with Luxatech and uh, looking at Luxatech, it's my, what, what, what you guys do is, is there's a mining pool, hash rate index and Viridi funds. Uh, what the hell is a Viridi fund? Uh, so Viridi is like, uh, we, I guess, I don't know how to explain our relationship with Viridi. Um, I guess we, we technically sponsor the fund. So like we're involved in it, but we don't technically manage it. Um, like we we're, we're, we're hands off in terms of actually like any sort of allocation or things like that. Like that's totally up to them. But so Veridi funds is just like a Bitcoin mining ETF. So um, it's got a really long technical name because the SEC like forces you to do all this bullshit when you're filing for an ETF. Like it's like the Veridi um, clean energy and semiconductor ETF because it's got like some shares of TSMC in there and uh, a bunch of other Bitcoin miners. But so yeah, it's just a basket. Um, and uh, there's like that one. And then I think, um, what is it? Um, Valkyrie just came out with a Bitcoin mining ETF as well. Um, yeah, so. tickers wag me. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, we all gonna make it. Yeah, it is. That's, <laughs> I mean, like the, the, the meme signal is strong. I, I think it's hilarious how brazen some, some companies are in this industry. Um, That's but, true. Yeah, so, um, but in Luxor in general, yeah, we're a mining pool. We also broker ASICs um, and uh, we got hash rate index, which is like what I kind of oversee, uh, which, you know, data and research for Bitcoin mining. When you guys say you broker ASICs, do you guys um, like run them for people or do you just sell them? Like, no, we don't, we don't run them. them. We don't host. Yeah, we just like match sellers and buyers. Um, and uh, which is something that we did, just started doing this past year because again, like because of the mining ban, there's just so many, I mean, like imagine to kind of like get, put this into perspective for people, like there were millions of ASICs in China, like, you know, like anywhere from like one to three, um, more machines than that, if you count all the different types of mining. But like, so you would have farms where it's just like, they just shut down like 20,000 machines and they'd be like, where are we going to put these? Like, where are these going to go? And you had that happening all across the country. So um, it really opened up uh, a lot of business opportunities for a lot of Bitcoin miners in North America. Um, and also like, and, and just in, and again, in the Western hemisphere in general. Uh, but yeah, so if anyone has any need for some ASICs, uh, hit us up. I, from late last year, um, El Salvador, you know, they announced that they were going to launch Bitcoin City and it was going to be powered by geothermal energy. Um, does uh, Lexor have, do they have any intention to actually leverage, you know, for the, you know, any sort of partnership they intend to go into with the El Salvador government, you know, in regards to that? Yeah, we tried. Um, we really tried to, I think most every mining company in, in the world tried to get their foot in the door. Um, we tried, but um, I don't know. So I know they're working pretty closely with Blockstream. Um, and I think Blockstream is probably going to be the partner that they use for most of their mining stuff. Um, Blockstream will probably help them with getting, has probably helped them with getting the ASICs, uh, probably are helping them. I just don't know what pool they're using. That's like the only thing that I don't know and I would like to. Um, there are rumors that they're using slush, but I don't think that that's true. Um, because like when Bukele tweeted like their first payout, the way slush's payout system works, I don't like that the, they wouldn't have been able to have received it yet. Like it was below slush's threshold and they hadn't been mining long enough to receive one. So um, I'd be curious to know who they're using there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that whole thing develops too, because um, I, I don't know enough about geothermal. Apparently, like they're it's extremely expensive to like start, but once you like get one going, it's like so low cost. So this could be extremely beneficial if they actually do it right. I'm inclined to think that they will because the Blockstream team is very confident in basically everything that they do. Did you see the article about the new miner? Um, AC yeah. supposedly yeah. has like 400 terahash. Yeah. What's your opinion on that? Man, that's weird, dude. Because it's not, it's not, it's not. 440 terahash like it's just you know um they were claiming it was like 440 terahash and i think like 8800 watts and, and that, that's just like insane um that's uh, better than anything bitmain is putting out right now um, except for i guess the xp but even then 
So yeah, I don't think it's real. Um, like they, if you look at some of like this marketing stuff, like they literally lifted the design for the miner from like some computing company's desktop or something like that. And like the, yeah, the company acknowledged it. Right. But what's really weird about it is it's like the company that like, so like the reason why everyone, um, and we tweeted about it at hash rate index. I actually tweeted about it at the time, um, uh, joking around and it got a lot of traction. I was just like, Oh fuck guys, like this thing is not real. Um, but, uh, the, the weird thing is, is like the company that like signed an agreement to buy them, Griffin, is like merging with this company called uh, Sphere 3D or something, I think. Anyway, they're going public this year um, on the NASDAQ. I think it's either the NASDAQ or the NYC um, e, or, uh, or, or, or the New York Stock Exchange. But um, they're going like it's going public and like Griffin's like a big mining company and they just like purchased or like sign an agreement to sell stock and to buy with cash, like millions of dollars worth of these miners. And it doesn't make any sense. Like if you're like a professional mining company, like you would, like that means that they signed these papers before they actually saw a working prototype and tested. That's insane to me, right? Um, for like a new miner to come in and say we have a machine that produces 440 terahash, like class leading efficiency and class leading performance and you don't see it and you buy it. So yeah, I don't think it's real and I don't really know what Griffin's doing. Um, I, I just hope that there's a way for them to renege that because if not, then it's gonna be brutal for them. <laughs>